Hello, and welcome to another edition of Teen Startup TV. Today we have tennis pro and all-star Idea Center student Matt Higgins with us. Hello, Matt. How are Hello. you doing today? Great. Terrific. Thanks for having me. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what was your business or your venture when you started at the Idea Center? Yeah, so uh, I knew I wanted to do something uh, in the realm of tennis uh, as a tennis player. Um, and one of the biggest uh, issues with, with tennis in New Brunswick is the fact that there's only one indoor tennis facility in the whole province, and uh, that's in Fredericton. So for me, um, from the Kennebecasis Valley area, that makes it very hard for me and fellow tennis players uh, from this area to play year-round. Um, and so tennis really isn't uh, as popular as it has the potential to be here. Um, and as well, uh, there's, there, you know, there, there's a lot of youth um, in the Fundy region who can't really afford to play sports. And so uh, I wanted to solve both those problems uh, by creating a nonprofit indoor tennis facility in the St. John area. That's a fantastic idea. Uh, what was it that made you feel that you really wanted to go after this idea and, and where does your passion for tennis come from? Yeah, so I'll break that down into two questions. Um, my passion for tennis, uh, uh, hockey was always my life um, and then I had a major concussion um, which forced me to, to stop playing hockey competitively um, and it, it, it like hockey was my outlet right so I, it left me um, depressed confused uh, I, I just didn't have that, um, that you know that was my thing I, I was I was missing a thing um, and so my parents suggested I try a new sport um, something non-contact and uh, I'd always liked watching tennis on TV, so I thought I'd give it a go. And uh, that, from that first day on court, uh, I was hooked. And uh, tennis has pretty much been my life ever since. Why you took your love for tennis and decided yes. to make it into your yeah. business so, idea? Yeah, I, I, I started playing tennis um, very late in terms of, of tennis. Like, if you look at uh, competitive and professional tennis players, they start when they, when they can walk. Um, and I was starting at uh, age 13, 14, um, and I'm a very competitive person, so I, I wanted to you know, get to the top, be the best I could be, um, and the biggest obstacle that stood in my way and stood in the way of everyone from this area is, like I said, there's, there's nowhere to play year-round, and so it's really hard to compete with um, you know, players from Fredericton who play five days a week all year-round. Definitely. Uh, so who were the people that helped you with this work when you started to reach out, do market research? Who were your mentors or supporters? Yeah, so definitely um, both, I would say, both the students and teachers uh, at the Idea Center. Um, obviously the teachers uh, to, to, you know, guide me and uh, advise me, um, but, but the students, fellow students played a big role as well, just... Um, creating a really encouraging environment and, and also offering um, uh, an outside perspective, right? Um, and then more in the tennis world, um, I was very lucky to, to um, already, uh, already know the, um, the president of Tennis New Brunswick. And so um, it was, it was uh, luckily for me, fairly, fairly easy to, to get him on board with my project. And, and he's definitely been um, a big name in the community that that, uh, that has backed me. What other? Uh, who are the other community members that were willing to work with you? Um, Keith Rains. Uh, he he was very um, receptive of my idea. Um, he uh, co-founded the East Coast Games, um, and so he's he's a big sports guy. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I I shot him an email and. Uh, he was willing to talk with me right away, and we had like an hour and a half long phone call. So he was, he, he was really enthusiastic about the idea. That's and, terrific. Uh, yeah. Did, was there anyone who wasn't willing to help you or take time to speak with you? Like, did you find? Um, I haven't really ran into that option yet, or that that uh, that struggle yet, because um, I think part of the reason is I, I was pretty I was pretty picky with who I reached out to, um, which. Uh, in my case, it worked out, but um, I probably wouldn't recommend that. Like, it, the best way to go is just to reach out to as many people as possible, um, because that way, uh, you know, you're going to find someone that 
maybe you didn't think could help you, but they can, or they know someone who could help you, right? So the more people you can connect with, the better. Um, but yeah, I, I, again, I was very lucky to, to have connections within the tennis community um, already. And the people that I did reach out to were um, people that I was almost 100% certain would be willing to, to talk to me. But, but yeah, um, a piece of advice would definitely be to, to not do what I did and, and reach out to as many people as you can. Cast a wide net. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll take you. For sure. Yeah. Okay, well, so what were some of your biggest challenges, uh, either at the start, back, back in the first phase, what would you say were your biggest challenges or obstacles to, to making progress? Um, on a personal level, uh, the biggest challenges have been, um, I struggle with uh, pretty severe OCD um, and uh, with COVID that, that brought along a lot of anxiety and depression. Um, and so just in my personal life, it, it, was, it was really hard to, to um, stay committed and, and motivated and uh, get you know, a good amount of work done on basically anything. Yeah. Um, and if it wasn't for the Idea Center and having you know, a solid chunk of, of two hours in my day to, to dedicate to it, um, I, I probably would have quit and, and not continued because I was just going through a really, really rough patch yeah. in, in my personal life. And you know, life, so. every entrepreneur, for different reasons, yeah. has a patch where they need their, their partners to pick them up or be patient yeah, yeah. or give them, give them some space for a while. So it's, I think that's, a lot of people don't talk about that, yeah. about, the, about how it's not going to be smooth sailing start yeah, to finish. Yeah, for sure. So when, um, once your health returned and you felt like you were you know, ready to, to um, be, be at working hard again, what were the biggest challenges with the project? Um, with the project itself, uh, at the very beginning, um, you know, it, it was, it's, it's, it's a pretty uh, big project to take on to say, I, I want to you know, build or create uh, an indoor tennis facility. Um, these are facilities that usually cost millions of dollars uh, to make. So it was, it was how on earth am I gonna um, collect enough investments to, to do this? Right? I, I don't have you know a couple million dollars burn a burn a hole in my pocket. So um, that that was that was a big thing to to um, sort of conceptualize. And so the way the way I went about that was I just thought, well, it doesn't have to be a state of the art million dollar facility. What is the most um, efficient and economical way I can go about this. Um, and so I did some research and I came across um, a much cheaper option which was uh, tile tennis courts. And uh, these are basically like uh, small tiles that snap together like Lego uh, to form a tennis court. Hmm. And uh, they're still fairly expensive, around $30,000 per per court. Um, but it's, it's a lot cheaper than, um, you know, actually building a facility. So um, then once I figured that out, uh, I, I poked around some more and um, I was able to, and I, I was actually through more further research, I, I was able to find um, a, a potential partner um, locally that, that actually um, had enough tiles for two of these courts uh, that they were no longer using and just sitting in storage. So. Um, I set up a meeting with them and, and pitched my idea uh, to them and uh, with the backing of important mentors such as uh, President of Tennis in Brunswick, um, they, they offered the, the tiles. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How and many meetings would you say you had with those folks before they felt comfortable um, making that kind of an offer? That's a very generous yeah, partnership. Yeah, for sure. Um, an initial, uh, it, it took uh, a decent amount of, of, of initial emails to to nail down a time and actually get a phone call. Um, and then uh, I, I don't think they were, they were like, through the emails, I couldn't really convey like the full scale of what I was trying to, trying to convey. So I don't think they were fully expecting um, what I was proposing to them. Um, so through talking to them over the phone, uh, we had probably 45 minute, hour long phone call um, where I could fully pitch the idea um, and it was connecting with them, human being to human being. That uh, there's, there's no substitute yeah, yeah, for that. Exactly. That, uh, that I was really able to, you know, convey my passion and and uh, bring them on board. So that's that's awesome, Matt. That's terrific. Well, 
with the success that you're having in making progress on your project, I wonder, um, looking back, what advice you would give to students who are starting out on a new project, even if they're not at the Idea Center, if they're just working on a project in their own, at their school, in their entrepreneurship class, at a middle school, whatever it is, what advice would you give for a student starting out on a project? Um, definitely, you have, you have basically all the information you could ever want at your fingertips uh, through Google and the internet, right? So um, just dive in, into research. Like it, you, you, can, you can really never be finished with uh, research and market research. Um, so definitely fully dive in. You know, don't, don't burn yourself out, but um, dive into it. Learn as much as you possibly can um, about whatever it is you're trying to pursue. Um, and then from there, uh, get in contact with 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 people in your community, such as the Idea Center, who can who can connect you to um, you know people in in your specific area um, that can help you further it. But but definitely for sure, um, so that's a, a good point. Even if yeah. you're not an, a student at the Idea Center, yeah. you can reach out and get support. Yeah, for sure. Um, but definitely start out with with having a good basis basis of knowledge um, on. On whatever it is you're you're trying to pursue, right on. Because the more I, I at least I found the more knowledgeable I am about something, the more confident I am uh, reaching out to people about it um, and pursuing it further. So so yeah, definitely research is a big one. Before we started the interview, you mentioned that uh, public speaking and uh, getting outside your comfort zone yeah. isn't yeah. something that you always want to do. Yet yeah. you seem pretty comfortable doing it. How did how did that sort of evolve? Yeah. So I'm. I'm a person who's uh, I'm I'm pretty shy. Um, I I uh, I don't like to take um, risks. I, I have big fear of the unknown, and that comes with with OCD. Um, but you know you, you have to eventually acclimatize yourself to the idea that um, in the world of business you're not going to succeed if if you don't take risks, um, calculated risks though. Um, but uh, for me, I found that um, because I found something that I'm so passionate about, I'm much more comfortable taking those risks and taking those leaps um, because I've done the research and because I know what I'm talking about. Uh, I have a lot more confidence um, than I would just in my personal life, um, you know, to, to take a leap of faith or. Or, or something of, of, of that matter. Like I, in my personal life, I, I very much kind of stay inside my shell, and that's something I'm trying to work on. Just personally, is uh, trying to be become more comfortable with being uncomfortable. But um, that's a that's a great goal. To yeah, be more comfortable yeah, yeah. with being uncomfortable. Yeah, I I, I like that saying. I can't remember uh, where I heard that, but but yeah, it's it's kind of become a, a motto um, and a personal goal. But uh, in terms of public speaking, I had um, a decent amount of public speaking experience before coming to the Idea Center, um, but it still was something I really did not enjoy doing, uh, even though I, I would say I was okay at it. Uh, I didn't enjoy it. Um, so coming to the Idea Center, um, where it's really a big focus, uh, and and through through um, weekly public speaking programs and, uh, and working on pitching, and just Really, really, all it is, is is the more you do it, the more comfortable you come, you become with it. You just you just have to force yourself to do it over and over and over again. And now, um, like today, public speaking, I I never would have um, pictured myself saying this a couple of years ago, but now public speaking is something um, I actually find enjoyable. Like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for someone who says he was just okay at it, uh, your pitch was, if I'm not mistaken, the in the finals for the provincial pitch contest yeah, and came yeah. second in the entire province so you must be a little more than okay at it now. yeah well and i feel like what helps me with that is like in school english has always been my strongest subject so i'm i'm very good at at um like writing and i feel like i'm i'm pretty good at, at articulating myself and conveying my ideas um and that's really a big part of pitching so i, I feel like that Definitely, definitely helped me out. Like when I when I write a pitch, um, I I write it like it's an essay, and and like I go through the whole writing process where you know I edit it down on a Word document and revise it, and then I start to to practice delivering it um, through speech. So that's that's kind of my process. Cool. Yeah. 
All right. So, Matt, is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Is there anything else I forgot that you th that uh, you had you wanted to share? Uh, uh, I guess just in terms of of the idea center, if there's um, anyone out there considering uh, joining, um, when when I was uh, first joining the idea center. Um, I personally joined because I've always been interested in business and entrepreneurship and I wanted to get a better taste um, uh, and more hands-on experience in that world so so I could you know make decisions about post-secondary and, and just gain more experience in a field that I was interested in but um, even if you're not interested in business the Idea Center is so much more than a business course um, I really view it as you're not starting a business or pursuing a business project. You're pursuing a passion in um, in a business format, right? So if you have anything you're passionate about, anything you just want to take um, more time to, to develop or work on um, or study or, or anything, um, the Idea Center is a, is a great place to, to come and do that. And, uh, and yeah, you learn a lot about the business world, but you also just get to pursue something that you love and you learn a lot of um, just genuine life skills here too. So, so no, matter, no matter what um, you come here to pursue, you're gonna leave more prepared for the future, wh whatever that's gonna hold for you. Yeah. Right on, Matt. Well, uh, you know, I would say that post-secondary education, and it's probably true of the Idea Center as well, is largely what you make it. And you've yep. certainly made the most of your time here. It's been a pleasure to work with you. So yeah. thank you very much for your time today and uh, best of luck in the future. Thanks. All you right. Too. Thanks very much. And thank you for joining us for Teen Startup TV.